Hello, everyone, as you're getting in the chat room. Um, I'm Brian. I will be the uh, MC for today's uh, webinar. Uh, really, really excited to present this one uh, in conjunction with Buncee. Um, we'll be talking uh, specifically about how to use Buncee and Capstone Connect, um, Capstone's newest platform, um, for some really amazing uh, in-class and remote learning um, mashups. Um, and Shannon Miller is here. Um, so we are really excited to get to share this with you. Um, we'll probably get started just a little bit after four, not too much, like a minute or so to give time for people to join. Um, but love to hear where y'all are joining us from today. Um, and if you uh, use Buncee currently, or Pebble Go, or Capstone Interactive eBooks. And I will be back with you here to give you about a 60 second warning, but uh, looking forward to it. Well, hello, everybody. We are at four o'clock now. I'm going to give it just another minute or two, um, probably more like a minute, uh, just to let more people get in. Uh, people are pouring in, so I want to make sure that uh, everybody has a chance before we get going. Um, again, uh, we are excited to be able to share with you about um, some of the amazing ways that you can connect uh, these two really wonderful platforms for your K through five students. Um, and we'll be with you here in just uh, literally a minute to get going. Well, hello once again, most of you, um, for anybody that's joined um, over the last few minutes. Um, my name is Brian. Um, I will be the MC for today's presentation and webinar. Um, like I mentioned, we are very excited to have you join us um, for this really cool opportunity um, in partnership with Buncee. Capstone in, is super excited to get to present about our newest platform, Capstone Connect. Um, and how you can use Buncee and Capstone Connect together for some um, really amazing uh, learning opportunities for your students. Um, so I want to introduce the crew to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Shannon McClintock Miller. I am the District Teacher, Librarian, and Innovation Director at Van Meter Community School. And I also serve as the Future Ready Librarian Spokesperson. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Shannon M. Miller. Hi, everyone. My name is Angie Kaltoff, and I'm the Product Manager for Curriculum and Instruction here at Capstone. And prior to this, I was a teacher in both an elementary setting and a university setting. And you can find me on Twitter at, at Mrs. Kaltoff. Um, and again, my name is Brian, uh, Brian Schmidt. Um, I am the Ed Tech Marketing Manager uh, and have been, had the privilege to work with some of our amazing uh, platforms at Capstone from Pebble Go to Capstone Interactive eBooks and now um, Capstone Connect. Um, and you can reach out to um, all of us through uh, at Capstone Pub um, and definitely a great channel to uh, reach us. 
All right. Hello. Um, my name is Ida Jimenez. I'm with the Buncey team. Really excited to be here with everyone. Uh, so I have the opportunity here at Buncey to be able to work with educators just like Shannon to be able to, you know, create awesome ideas to make learning fun and engaging for our students. So I'm really excited for today's session. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Well, um, as some of you might know, um, who've been to a few of our webinars in the past, I always like to go through some of the details and the most popular questions. First of all, yes, please ask us anything. Um, we want this to be really interactive and a good opportunity to uh, dialogue with you as we're going through this presentation. So feel free uh, in the Q&A area um, for specific questions or right within the chat. Um, we'll have uh, multiple people that'll be um, able to answer throughout. Um, additionally, the webinar is being recorded, so don't worry about jotting down everything you see. Um, it, it will make sure we get this webinar recording out to you, um, as well as the presentation. Um, and then the other thing that I've seen a lot of value in for a lot of attendees at other webinars we've done is just a conversation during the webinar, but really beyond that, um, because there's a lot of amazing educators out there who do some incredible things uh, with capstone resources and definitely with Buncey. Uh, so feel free to um, at either of us, uh, hashtag capstone connect, hashtag Buncey um, with some of your um, ideas or it's a great way just to uh, search for inspiration as well beyond this. So a little roadmap of where we're going today. Um, so we obviously went through introductions. Um, I'll be taking uh, you through a quick intro video into what is capstone connect um, and then uh, just summarizing some of the key points. Um, and then we get into the meat uh, of the presentation where I think uh, it's really going to um, be beneficial. Um, so we'll jump into eight creative coding projects and Shannon will walk you through all those, um, give you the foundation to show you how um, she's used it. Um, and then in the second half, it's really going to be a how-to. So not only will you have these uh, inspirational projects, but you'll see exactly how to do it using Capstone Connect and Buncee. Uh, with Angie and Ida. Um, and then at the end, um, we will definitely have time for dedicated questions. So feel free to send those in. Um, and if we don't get through them uh, in the chat, we'll get to them at the end. So uh, we'll jump in right now and uh, start off by watching a video of uh, Capstone Connect. And actually, I need to uh, make sure my audio is on. So one second. Apologize for that. I just always forget that Zoom does not default to have the audio on. Okay, here you go. You're a teacher. You spend hours every week finding resources for your students, the right resources. You gather it, you send it, they click it and get an error or have to create yet another login and password. They get frustrated. Their caregivers get frustrated. And you get frustrated. There is an easier way. Introducing Capstone Connect, your one-stop content hub, where you can quickly and easily search and share educationally appropriate highly engaging Capstone content. Capstone Connect gives you instant access to Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next, Pebble Go Spanish, Pebble Go Read More, Capstone Interactive's collection of eBooks with read aloud audio, and hundreds of other digital learning resources designed for use by both teachers and students. With Capstone Connect, you have thousands of content pieces that are matched to state and national standards right at your fingertips. No matter what ed tech tool you're using, you can give your students direct access to Capstone Connect's content with just a few clicks. Here's how it works. Once you've signed into your Pebble Go account, simply click the Capstone drop-down menu and select Search. Here you can search by either state and national standards or by title and get instant results, which you can organize by type 
and also preview each item to find the exact content you're looking for. Then just copy the link and directly add it to any EdTech platform to give your students one-click access. No new logins or passwords required. <gasps> Connecting your students to great resources has never been easier. With Capstone Connect. Go to okay, well, there is a high level overview of what Capstone Connect is, but more importantly, uh, the hope is to um, really um, identify how this can be uh, useful for teachers um, dealing with in class, remote learning. Um, just some of the common challenges that uh, educators face. Um, so what Capstone Connect ultimately is, is it's a direct path to help uh, educators discover and share standards aligned content for their K through five students. Um, and what it includes um, is Pebble Go, um, which is our K through three research platform um, with thousands of uh, nonfiction articles. Uh, Pebble Go Spanish, which takes all those articles and has them translated with all the same supports as the English version uh, into Spanish. Um, Pebble Go Read More, which is uh, two eBooks connected directly to uh, every article in animals and science within Pebble Go um, that kids can access right within uh, the platform. And then also Pebble Go Next, which is our uh, grades three through five uh, research database. Um, so it has the aged up content, um, but the same um, comfortable, familiar platform that kids are familiar with and love. Um, but really all that uh, nonfiction content is built in and then uh, thematic ebook bundles. So um, there are thousands of ebook bundles, fiction and nonfiction that are included as part of that package. Um, and then compilations of instructional materials. So these are really geared towards um, being lesson plans and activities for uh, teachers. Um, to be able to, I hate to call it an easy button because there's no easy button for teachers, but at the same time, really make it a little easier for teachers to uh, find content and be able to use the content um, for educational purposes. Um, and then again, making sure all of it is all aligned and searchable to national standards. Um, you also saw in the video too, there's an easier way to get to content, even than uh, searching by standard. If you just know you want certain titles of content. So if you're looking for titles on bears, um, or if you're looking for a title on uh, volcanoes, all of that can be searched um, to find the content and then share with students without one easy uh, click. Um, so again, here's just another little summary of what's all included in the Capstone Connect package and what that looks like. Again, really pointing to um, how easy it is um, for educators to find the content and get it to their kids. And Angie's actually gonna show you how to do that when it gets to her. Um, but now I'm going to hand it off to Shannon, um, who will show you some of the ways she's used uh, Capstone Connect and Buncee together um, to make some really um, wonderful coding related projects. All righty. So I'm going to grab the screen here. I love that new video. It's, it's awesome. Okay, I'm going to go over to mine. Get on the right one. Okay, well, I am super excited to share eight creative coding projects using Buncee and Capstone Connect. And as we get ready for Hour of Code and just coding throughout the year, I think that bringing these two together is the perfect fit. And so I'm really excited, you know, not only as we think about the things that we're going to share today, but even thinking about how we're going to share it with our teachers and our students and our families as well. And so bringing together that little poster that I showed you first, my friend Marie, who is actually the creator of Buncee, she made this for me today and sent it to me. And this would be like the perfect little poster to share as you're getting ready for Hour of Code or even an invitation that you could make in Buncee. And so I'll show you how to grab that too. But let's get started. The first one is create a fairy tale in Buncee with a technology twist. And one of my favorite series from Capstone are the far out fairy tales. And this one, Snow White and the Seven Robots, is perfect to tie in 
to Hour of Code and coding. And so it is a graphic novel format. And so within Buncee, it would be so fun to have kids be able to make their own little story or graphic novel. So I talked to my friends at Buncee for this webinar and they made us some really special stickers that tie into to some of the themes and also the books that we will share today. And I love these. I just got them today. They made them and they're so neat because here is a little Snow White and then seven space robots. And so turning that into a story with all of the new stickers would be so much fun. And these are just some of them that they have created that are new. And I love the kids too, that you could put into these stories, but they also could put a twist on. There's lots of characters. There's these little Martians, there's this little space dog or cat. I wasn't sure what that was, but it was really fun to be able, you know, to think about that and how you can tie it into that fairy tale series. And then in the back of each one, they even have a graphic that shows what the twist is. And so like Snow White, like what does that look like? And the dwarves, they're robots. And so even tying that into your bun seat as you're making it. Another great tie in is using, I love always seeing like what kind of apps I can smash up and even extend it farther. And we use a lot of breakout EDU. And so one of the digital breakouts that focus around fairy tales is called fairy tales social network. And this actually focuses around social media. So you could check that out too. Number two is to create a coding adventure graphic novel in Buncee. And again, this coding series, Adventures in Makerspace, there's one all about coding. And this is actually a series that I wrote with Blake Hona. There are eight of them in the Adventures in Makerspace series. And I love these because they're graphic novels all focused around a group of kids and their librarian and adventures that they go on. But in Buncee, just like in the first one, when you're creating a graphic novel, you can choose from lots of different templates that would be perfect for making like a comic or a graphic novel. But also when you search in the backgrounds, you can find so many more that are different colors or plain different sizes and once you click on one of these backgrounds then you can start adding your stickers and kids then can make their own coding adventure that happened in their makerspace and there's tons of makerspace stickers too in Buncee and so it makes it really super fun to be able to pull from all of these and kids love making you know, if it is a makerspace or a library or a scene from maybe school or their home. And so they can put those in, add speech bubbles and make their own graphic novel. You can also smash up Scratch with this one. And I love the digital storytelling that is um, they have now added in Scratch where you can even click on different characters and you can then bring them to life when what you code. So you can check out that too and Scratch is free. So that is a great, great thing. Number three is to create a step-by-step -step instruction buncy. One of the big things when we're teaching coding is talking about like sequencing and loops and patterns. And so this series that is on the left-hand side is a cantata series that has music to it. And then the other one are these adorable little characters that they talk then about things, maybe it's functions in the garden or cooking or patterns that they find in their toys. And so really two great series to tie in when we're talking about coding. Now, when I was looking and I was planning a um, lesson with my teachers last week, I was looking for something focusing around sequences and patterns because we're getting ready to introduce some robots to our preschool and our kindergarten kids. And so I found this book by looking in Capstone Connect. And then I read in the back that it even had an example of writing a loop code like for your favorite sandwich and what ingredients, what would you include? How would you do it? The directions in it. And so I went into Buncee and just found a simple template and showed the kids and how they could create. And you can even share this template with them. So they then could use the stickers 
to create, and it doesn't have to be a peanut butter sandwich, just steps on making something. And so Buncee, they made these really great templates that we can use now when we're thinking about four steps in doing something in coding. And so there are two of them that you will now find within Buncee. I also love that Buncee has this pattern activity. And when I was looking around for different ideas on how to use it with patterns or the step-by-step -step process, I was so excited to find this activity because this is one that you can then use, even make changes or use it as it is with your kids. And so you can share this link and then they can walk through these tasks and different things that talk about pattern. And so a really great thing to be able to use during this time as well. And then one more that they put together for the webinar was this four steps in creating a coding project. And this is just so much fun. And this is another template that we could find. Now, when we're in, and I know that Angie's gonna show you more too about using Capstone Connect, Capstone Connect has like been the biggest lifesaver for us. And it's really caught on, especially the last couple of weeks, because when I go in, like I said, and I search for a topic, I can quickly find all of the articles, the Pebble Go, the eBooks that are there. And it's so nice because when I was looking for, again, like patterns and that step-by-step, -step, I found a series that I had never seen before. And I found this book on making a jack-o'-lantern. It was perfect tie-in too, because we just had Halloween, but it also introduced us to a new series that we were able to look at. So that's a really great way to be able to use Connect too. Number four is to create a map and code an Ozobot to explore the map. And we do a lot of um, working with Ozobots this time of year because we do like the Macy's Day Parade and we do a parade route. And it's kind of our time too to introduce it to our preschoolers and our um, TK and kindergartners. And so when I was again searching right in Capstone Connect, I found a book that I didn't even know was there when I was searching for books about maps. I found the pirate book map. And the cool thing is the character is a robot. And so I was so excited to be able to use these, not only with the articles that I found in Pebble Go and some other eBooks, but also to pull in this book that was perfect because we were talking about robots. And so this is a whole series from Capstone. And I was able to grab that link then and share it with the kids. And when I went to Buncee and looked around at what maps they had, and I was kind of looking for a treasure map, I found this little template that was really great, just um, practice giving directions. And so perfect because I can add my own stickers. And so there's an Ozobots little sticker in Buncee. I added another robot and kids then could go in, they could add their own things, not even robots. Maybe they add things that they find in their neighborhood or in their room or in their classroom and any robotics that they would like to. And they also had a treasure map that was perfect. And so then when kids took that and they could create their own background, and their own route, they can then, when they are working on their route, they can use that map that they've created in Buncee after they do some practicing and create their own routes. This is our kids last year when we were doing our Macy's Day Parade. And I was so excited to tell the teachers about finding these books in Capstone and then the possibility of using Buncee before just to create their maps to get them thinking about how they would do the loops and do the patterns and make their little Ozobots go. And so they're really excited to do that again. Another thing that's fun with Ozobot, just a little app smash is um, Ozotown. They have put a lot of their little activities online that we can do for free with our kids. So this is a great one because they can practice their coding and that little center thing where it says Ozobot in the right hand side, they actually can code their Ozobot. If you have Ozobots, they can hold it up and it sends the coding to their Ozobot so they can even make their Ozobot go. But there are tons of great robotic books that Capstone has with some really fun ones from fiction to nonfiction. And I love this one, Could a Robot Make My Dinner? And so really, really fun kind of series that they have too around robotics.
Now, number five is to create a, if I were a computer scientist, Buncy, and talking about computer science, especially as we get ready for Hour of Code, is something that we do a lot of because we're a one-to-one -one district and we use a lot of technology. And so we want the kids really, when we're speaking even about like careers in the future and using things like drones and robotics and digital tools like Buncy, we talk a lot about like the background of technology and people who have created it and what jobs they might have. And so it's great to find when we're looking in Capstone Connect, all of the books and the articles that you can tie into these conversations as well. This is a great one, this unusual and awesome jobs using technology and also robots on the job. And so it got me thinking like we could have the kids think about the technology that they would create. And so Buncy put together a couple different templates that our kids can use. And then they can think if they were a computer scientist, what would they create? And our kids had so much fun putting these together and just adding, you know, simply a little video it doesn't even have to be writing. They could add stickers and they could add text, but even just a video to say what they would create. And so really, really fun project. Another thing that we did last year, you know, we're when we were virtual in the spring, we always do a wax museum and a lot of our kids focus on maybe careers in technology or people who have, you know, maybe invented things that have to do with space or things that the kids are really interested in gaming. And so when we had our wax museum and it was canceled, we used Flipgrid and the kids then added their video on that Flipgrid. And so fun way to even tie in our kids, you know, will hold up their computer a lot and show what they have created, but even acting out those different things that they can have too. Number six is to create a Buncee coding journal as you learn throughout Hour of Code. And our kids use Buncee for journaling a lot. And so these little Hour of Code templates are going to be so handy when we celebrate Hour of Code in December, but even all throughout the year. And with Hour of Code, I wanted just to mention, if you have never participated in Hour of Code before, this site of Hour of Code will be up all throughout the year. And they put activities on that we can use during Hour of Code in December, but again, use them throughout the year with our kids. And so you can check out some of these activities and then see how you can tie it in when you're searching for things in Capstone Connect. So for this one, I put in computer and I just wanted to know all of the eBooks and all of the Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next articles that were available. But also when we look at the little green one, those are educator resources that we can tie in then to the articles that we find, but also to all of these eBooks. And so when I was looking for computers, especially thinking about what they were maybe going to journal about, I was excited to see some of those teaching resources that support us, but also even tying in not just to that technical part, but even the social emotional learning part of our kids. And there's a great article called Technology and My Health. That is a really good one when you're thinking about that journaling and having kids think about technology. Number seven is to create robots in Buncee and write a Buncee robot story. And another one in the Adventures in Makerspace series that I did is called A Robotics Mission. And so again, having kids, you know, find out all they can about robots with all the books that we have and maybe the articles that are in Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next. But again, looking at some of those resource guides really got me thinking of ideas, kind of some extensions on what I could do with the books. And so when you click on the green button and you can download then these great educator resources that then go along with the books that we have. And I know that Angie's gonna show this to you, but if you can see on the little left hand side or right hand side of the screen on Capstone Connect, you grab that link. And it was so nice because if I have one book that I want to share, I can then just put it into their Google Classroom and then they can open it up 
and kind of inspire them when they're making their book about robots. And so there's lots of fun templates that Bunsey has made and you can find so many different parts of robots and robots that they can put together and then they can add their own story like I did. And so using just some of those fun speech bubbles you can really, really make a great story. Now, one thing that we have been using a lot of this year is Tinkercad and Tinkercad is a free program that makes 3D designs. So kids can go in free, they can then create like their own robots, for example, and even make a robotic story using Tinkercad. And the great thing about it is once they have made it in Tinkercad, you can download the free merge cube on paper, make the merge cube, and then use the app object viewer and the kids can even view then in 3D what they have created in Tinkercad. So a really fun thing, just a great way to bring storytelling to life. Number eight is to create music in Scratch and add to your Buncee coding journal. And so the, I love these books from Capstone. Um, coding in Scratch, this is a huge hit at our school and also the coding from Scratch. And this series has one that's really fun called Making Music from Scratch. And so you can tie in some of those topics and those projects that are in there, but also look for other books that maybe tie into technology that involve music. And there's lots of things even online that you can find. This is another series from Cantata called Technology is All Around You. You can find the song free on YouTube. And I love this because there's just really cute lyrics that go along with it. And it talks all about just our little budding scientists. Technology so really is all one. around you. Just gonna click on the next one. But this one would be a fun one to pair up with Scratch. And Scratch has a place that kids can create music. And if you want it to be even simpler, go to the Chrome Music Lab Song Maker where kids can then create music, even grab the link, and then they could add it to their Buncee journal because you can add and link anything within Buncee. And so if they're writing in their journal, they can take that link that they made either in Scratch or in Chrome Music Maker and then add it to their journal too. And so it makes it really fun. I also wanted to add just a few little ideas for the Buncee Ideas Lab and some choice boards that I put together. When we're thinking and brainstorming and collaborating with our teachers at school as librarians and as educators, it's really nice to have a place that we can go to find all kinds of ideas. And Buncee is definitely our place to do this because the Ideas Lab is full of amazing ideas that Buncee has put together and educators and librarians from all over the world. And these little ones about choice boards were just put in here this week and you can go and you can view them and then make a copy to use them for your own use. And so one that I put together today was just this coding choice board filled with places that our kids can go to make stories and music and games and videos, just all kinds of fun. But it also ties into the virtual maker space we have. And if you notice kind of in the middle, I always add Buncee to our choice boards because the kids love to use that too in our virtual maker space and also the maker space boards that we have. And it's really easy to use these templates to then make your own list of resources or even with this Hour of Code eBooks, I took the book covers of some of the books that I showed and when they click on them, it takes them right into these books. And with Capstone Connect, I can grab those direct links and kids don't have to get frustrated when they go to these books. So it's really easy just to add a book cover and add a link and then they could get to those resources as well. And so don't forget to check out the Ideas Lab because it is an amazing place to go to find these resources and a lot more throughout the year. Okay, so I am going to jump in and talk about Capstone Connect. So um, sh when Shannon stops sharing her screen, I'll jump in and share mine. Wonderful. Okay, so um, this is my name is Angie, and I work at Capstone as a product manager in curriculum and instruction. And prior to coming to Capstone, 
Um, I worked as a technology integrationist in a school district. And so I'm really excited to see all the activities that Shannon just shared with you. And uh, now I'll show you how to find those resources in Capstone Connect. And then Ida will show you how to create them and find other resources in Buncee. And then Shannon will come back on and bring it all together. So you can see step-by-step step how to make that happen. So to get started, on my screen right now, I'm hoping that you see pebblego.com. And this is where we go to get started and sign in to access all those wonderful books and articles and teaching resources. So I'll get started by clicking on sign in. And then I'll enter my username and password. And if you are a Capstone Connect customer, you will know your username and password. And once you're in, you'll see the PebbleGo homepage. But in the upper right corner, there is a Capstone button. And you can click on that. And at the top, you'll see a search button. So when I click on the search button, it will bring me to Capstone Connect. And here are the two ways that I can find content within Capstone Connect. Shannon mentioned it briefly during her activities, but I'm going to show you what it looks like to search both by standards and by title. So I'll start by searching by standards. So when I put my mouse over it, you can see that the button um, enlarges a bit and then I'll click on it. And you start with either a state or national standard. And I used to be a teacher in Minnesota. So I'm gonna go down and pick Minnesota. And I know that in Minnesota, we had some STEM activities and hour of code activities um, in our science standards. So I'm gonna go into science as my subject and I'm gonna pick second grade. So now Capstone Connect is um, going to give you a result, a list of grades, a list of standards connected to Minnesota in science in second grade. So you can see here all the standards that we have content for within Capstone Connect related to that standard search. I'm gonna go back up to the top and go to the nature of science and engineering. So here I am at the very top level of that standard. And if I click here, I'll get more resources. I can go down further into the substrands and get very specific and have less um, content returned to me, but I'm gonna go to the very top for this purpose. And once I get in here, I'll see different materials returned to me that are all connected to this standard. The standard is what you see right here at the top. And I can see that there are 316 different items returned to me. And in this case, I'm just going to search for something for robots or for computers. So up here in the filter area, I can type in the word robot. And I can see that we have one ebook on robots. As a teacher, I'm going to look at this first before I use it with my students. So I'll click on it. And now it'll bring me right to that ebook where I can go through the ebook and read it page by page and decide if this is the ebook that I'd like to use with my students. And if it is, I will go back to the admin tool and I'll click on the copy link button. So when I copy this link, that means that the link to that book is copied to my computer and I can bring it into a tool like Buncee and paste it in there. And when students click on that link, then they have direct access to it. I just wanna show you what that link looks like real quick. So here I pasted that link into my URL up here and you see all these different letters and numbers. Your account information is built into that. And that means that students don't have to remember a username and password. It's built right into this link. So when you put it in a place like Buncee and they click on it, it will bring them directly to that ebook and they don't have to enter a username and password. So that's one way I can discover content within Capstone Connect. The other way is through a title search. So I can click on the title search button and here I can type again a word. So I'm gonna start with robot so we can compare what we just saw. And when I type in the word robot, I see that there are 23 resources that have the word robot in their title. And I can scroll through and there's different pages of materials. And in this case, you can see that there are both eBooks and materials. So here is an eBook on robots. Again, I can click on the title to get that preview of the eBook. And if it's a book that I'd like to use, I can go back into Capstone Connect and I can look at this teaching material that's attached to this eBook. And here I can see 
that there are a few pages within this lesson plan that I can use as it helps me think about how to teach this ebook with my students. I'm going to go back into connect and I'm going to do a different word this time. I'm going to search by the word computer. So I type in my word, I click the search icon. Now you can see that there are different buttons up here. And these are different resources within Capstone Connect. So Pebble Go articles are made for, I think, early readers, think kindergarten through second grade. Pebble Go Next, think more advanced readers, maybe third through fifth grade. Ebooks are made for all students, um, different levels. And you can see that within the book. And the materials, again, are the teaching materials. So if I know that I only want to see Pebble Go articles, I can toggle on only Pebble Go articles. Or if I want to compare between Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next, I can turn both on. So I can just turn these buttons on and off by clicking them. And again, I can preview the resource first by clicking on it. And here I am out at the Pebble Go website. Once I'm here, if I decide that this is the resource that I want to use, I'll go back into Capstone Connect and I'll click that copy link button. Now that link is copied to my computer and I can paste it into a tool like Buncee. And when my students click on it, it will bring them right to that Pebble Go article on computer hardware. So I'm gonna go back into Capstone Connect and show you one more time how to get here. So if I go to pebblego.com and I go to sign in in the upper right corner, if I don't have my username and password in there yet, I'll have to enter it. If I do, it'll have, it, you'll see on your computer what just happened on mine it brought me right here. I can go to the drop down with Capstone and go down to search. And then on this page, I search either by standards or by title search. So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll let Ida take over and show you what it looks like within Buncee. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Angie. I mean, that was amazing. Um, so as I share my screen over here, um, what I just have to say, what I love about the Capstone and Buncee connection here is that as you access all of these amazing resources right from Capstone, as you heard from Shannon yourself, you could get very creative with how you get your students to reflect, think, and also respond to any of the different types of articles that you access within Capstone on Buncee itself. And so that being said, why don't I just take a moment here to actually share you how uh, to get started with Buncee. Um, so what you'll do first of all is head to buncee.com. So that's B-U-N-C-E-E.com. So you'll notice it right over the top here. Um, so once you do that, what you'll notice is that um, there's two options on the top right hand side of my screen. Uh, first of all, if you don't have an account yet, um, feel free to sign up for an account. You'll see that blue button here. Once you click on that, um, it'll take you to the sign up page where you could uh, sign up for free. Um, in addition to that, so if you are, um, like me, an existing Buncee user, um, you'll go ahead to the login button. So once you log in, I'll just type my username here. Um, so once you log in, I'll show you how to actually create some of those ideas that um, Shannon had made herself, as well as how to create from scratch on Buncee. And so once I log in, um, what you'll notice here is that this is my account as a teacher. And so you'll notice, of course, I already have um, over 1800 Buncees. So I love to Buncee myself, but um, as you get started, so some of the key things to keep in mind, especially if you're new to Buncee is that Buncee is a really creative platform. It's a content creation tool that really hopes to give you as a user the ability to really demonstrate and express your thoughts, your ideas, um, anything that you'd really like on some form of content. So on Buncee, you'll be able to create things like visual projects, just as Shannon had shown. You can create interactive lessons, newsletters, presentations. Um, so the creativity is really up to you. So once you get started on Buncee and once you log in, this is what your screen will look like. So now that we're ready to create our content, what you'll notice is that on my screen, you'll see uh, a button right over here that says create a new Buncee or you'll see a, a red button on the top right hand side of my screen where you'll be able to create. So once you press these buttons, what you'll notice immediately is all of the different templates that are available to you uh, to be able to get started with creating. So Shannon had shared a lot of amazing different ideas about how to use Buncee to, um, to, in support of Hour of Code. So what you'll notice here is that I have a pop-up to select an existing template. 
Um, so you'll be able to scroll right through to see what's newly added. So you'll notice there's a lot of different ways to use Buncee for hour of code. Um, so as you scroll through, you'll see that there's an option to do an hour of code choice board. Um, you'll also notice that if I go back here, that you'll also be able to have your students uh, pick templates where they're able to reflect. Um, you'll notice that there's a lot of different graphics for you to pick from. Um, so you'll be able to start a Buncee um, from a template yourself. You'll be able to see all of the different categories as well for you to be able to choose from or select from any of the ones that I already have on my screen. Um, but for this instance, what I'll do is I just want to be able to actually create from an existing template. So once you see a template that you want to create one, especially for Hour of Code, you'll go ahead, select that template. You'll be able to preview it. And then you'll press this blue button on the bottom right hand side of my screen that says use this template. And so once you do that, you'll be able to obviously open up your Buncee and start creating from there. So now I have a Buncee that I'm already ready to be able to edit and add to myself. So what you'll see is that I can add text. It gives me different prompts of how to update this um, as well. But some other things to keep in mind is that this is how you create from a template. So what you'll notice is on the right hand side of my screen, you'll see a plus button where you'll actually be able to add more material to this um, Buncee. So once you press this plus button, you'll notice that um, some of the prompt says to record a video or add some text over here. So what I'll do over here on the plus button is see all of the different ways that I can edit this Buncee and add different media to it. So once you press that plus button, you'll see that all of the different graphics from Buncee are all in one place. So they are color coordinated, just to keep in mind to make it easy for our kids to be able to navigate, especially if you know they're younger and we don't want to overwhelm them. And so just to sort of go through over here. So everything in yellow, you'll notice is that things that you could create, you could add text, shapes, you can have your students draw. Everything in red represents different Buncee graphics, all educationally focused, of course. Um, that um, they can access. So those animations that you are seeing, the stickers, the messages, you can add emojis, which is really great for social emotional learning too, as well as 3D graphics. Um, other things that you'll be able to add are um, web images, as well as panoramic images. So keep in mind, these are Creative Commons licensed. So as you pull in content from Buncee, they are safe for your students, as well as for yourself as an educator to be able to use. You don't have to worry about those copyright issues. So you'll be able to search the web right from Buncee. You can even add YouTube channels. Um, in fact, you can access Capstone uh, Ready channels, or videos rather, from YouTube here. Um, you can also um, see everything in green represents things that you can access um, from your device. So you can upload files, you can import URLs, record video, take photos. Um, and then if you'd like to go into a little more, you can actually use Buncee um, to add free response questions, multiple choice. So if you want to give your students a task for Hour of Code, you'll be able to give them an assignment version of a Buncee. So all of the different media options are in one place. So as you start having your students create their projects on Buncee, it's very easy for them to be able to add any sort of media that they'd like. So now that we've covered all of the options that you have available, for my template, we'll notice that you can use it. Um, we're asking our students to think about what they learned for the Hour of Code. So for inspiration here, what I'm going to do is uh, search for a graphic um, from our Buncee library. So you'll notice over here where it says search for images, videos, and Buncee art, I'll be able to type in a keyword. So I'm going to type in code um, since we're talking about Hour of Code. So now that I type it, I press enter. And what it will do is actually search for awesome graphics um, from the Buncee library that you can actually just drag and drop into your screen. So you'll notice that there are different robots, um, you can search for different animations too. So all of this will be interactive that you can add to your, your Buncee itself. So I'm gonna go ahead, select a few to add. So once you go ahead, select them, you'll notice that they are then um, selected when they have that uh, blue rectangle around them. And I could just drag them right in. So it's very simple and easy for your kids to really make something that's fun and interactive um, as they get creative for Hour of Code. So you'll be able to, as you notice, um, move these graphics around. Um, you'll notice on the bottom hand side that you'll also be able to add more detailed um, actions to it. And I know uh, Shannon will actually go into this in a lot more detail. Um, so that's how you actually add um, or create a Buncee from an existing template and had, add more items to it um, from a template. 
So other things, I just want to quickly show you how do you start from scratch, especially on Buncee, or from an idea, rather. Um, so now that I shut down my template and closed out my screen, what you'll notice is I'm back to my um, dashboard here. And this is the Buncee that I just created. Um, so Shannon had touched upon Ideas Lab. So let's say that you're still looking for more inspiration beyond the templates library. What you'll do on your dashboard is actually head to the Ideas Lab on the top of your screen. So that's that blue button right over here that I'm hovering over. Um, you'll select Ideas Lab. And this is also where you're gonna find amazing different resources, not just for Hour of Code, but really for any sort of subject area and any sort of grade level. So once you hit Ideas Lab, Ideas Lab is this amazing resource that, as Shannon had mentioned, really shared by users in our community, as well as um, you know from the Buncee team too. But what's amazing about this is that if you don't know how to get started or you know what to create or what innovation to bring to your class, head over to Ideas Lab and you'll be able to find different teacher tested um, classroom ready activities that you can scroll through, especially for Hour of Code. So what you'll notice on my screen is that we have a anchor chart right over here for coding for your classroom. So what you'll notice is that when you select an idea in Ideas Lab, you'll be able to preview it. So you'll notice that that sequencing project that um, Shannon had mentioned, you'll be able to take this project, you'll be able to read a little bit about this activity, decide if you want to use it or not with your kids. And if you do, what you'll notice is that you'll see this blue button that will allow you to create this from this template. So you'll go ahead, press create this. And now you're given the option to be able to edit it, view it. So we'll go ahead and edit it. And that's how exactly you pull a template right from Ideas Lab. So there's a lot of different ways for you to be able to get started using Buncee for Hour of Code. You can use it, as Shannon mentioned, for creating digital stories, comic strips, patterns, sequencing. You can make it for maps or even have a student create a journal. Um, so this is how you actually create from a template. The last sort of thing I wanted to share is how do you create from scratch, right? So if you are very creative yourself, you know, you're feeling ready, you don't have to dive right into a template. What you can do is head back to your dashboard. And then what you'll do again is create a new Buncee. So that's that button on the left-hand side. So you'll create a new Buncee. And then once what you'll do after here is you'll exit the templates library that we covered. And you'll be able to see that you have your blank canvas where you'll be able to create a Buncee from scratch if you don't want to use a template. That being said, what you'll notice is that it's a blank canvas. So there's three different buttons that gear you towards what to do. So it's very easy for you to get started. You can, of course, change your background. So we'll go ahead, click this button to change our background quickly here. Um, so once you press change a background, you'll notice again, you'll be able to access our templates library, our templates, our backgrounds library. So you'll notice there's thousands of different Buncee graphics that you could pick from. Of course, some of the top is already things that are ready for coding itself. So you'll be able to select them as well. Um, but just some things to note is before we select any of these backgrounds on the left hand side, you'll see so many different options for you to be able to search for more backgrounds on Buncee. So you'll be able to search the web. Again, like I mentioned earlier, they are Creative Commons licensed, so it's safe for your students to search the web from Buncee. Uh, you could change the colors, you can upload, you could also see some of our existing categories. So we have About Me. Um, the ones in particular for this would be around education, if you're looking for science. Um, there's a science category as well. Um, so you'll be able to search any of these different graphics to be able to create your um, Hour of Code projects with Capstone. So I'll go ahead, select one of our um, backgrounds, drag it right in again. And now that we've added our uh, background, what we'll do now is obviously add more items to it. And so just to quickly show you how that works. So you'll see there's this uh, blue button. It's a little um, blurred because of the uh, strong background color, but you'll press the blue button over here. That's that plus sign or that plus sign on the right hand side of my screen. And then again, that will bring you back to all of the different um, graphics and media options for you to be able to create with Hour of Code. And so that's exactly how you could create a Buncee from either Scratch or from an existing templates from the templates library or from Ideas Lab. And so with that, I'm actually gonna pass it back to you, Shannon, as you walk us through how to create an activity in full with Buncee and Capstone. Okay. I'm gonna do this really fast. Okay, so when you are making a Buncee Hour of Code journal, 
it's really easy. And I just wanted to just show you how fast it is to, to do with your kids, because when they go and they log in, they can search for these templates that are so awesome and that were just put in. And so we can find them right away. And I selected the 2020 hour of code. I then would click in the right hand corner, use this template that puts it into my Buncee. And then again, that little purple circle, it is circling the plus sign. So when I click on that, it brings up all the different assets that I can add. And so kids can search for, they're looking for a specific, maybe a robot, or in this case, an Ozobot, or something that maybe a dog or whatever they want to put in, they can search for it, then click on add and add that along with even changing the text and color and size, anything they want to, to make their page theirs. And I think that's the cool thing about Buncee is really making it where their voice can be heard through their Buncee and their work. And so I love how they can add stickers and animations. They can even add their own video. They can add pictures that they have taken and so like, for our Ozobot example, they could even hold up their map and take a picture and add that then to their journal and even reflect with a video or even with just a response that they would record as well. Another thing I love about Buncee is that they can then share all of these onto a Buncee board. And Buncee has made it so easy because now when they go and they click on, well, I've made a Buncee board. And when kids then go to the share button, they just put in that code that I share usually just on a board or even in their Google Classroom. And it automatically then adds their Buncee to the Buncee board. It is that easy. And so right now, like this week, we're doing um, Veterans Day Buncees and it is just loaded with Buncees from all over our school, from our kids. And so Buncee boards is a great way to, to share things as well. Thank you so much, Shannon. The, honestly, this has been, for me even, honestly, opening eye-opening, um, just the ways that mashing up Capstone Connect, um, Buncee, um, and using them, whether you're using them specifically for the hour of code um, or all throughout the year, um, just there's a lot of really creative, inspirational ideas. Um, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. So. Um, excited for what those of you who uh, joined us might come up with. Um, this is a good jumping off point. Um, saw a couple questions uh, just about how to get in contact um, if you have questions. So if you do have questions um, and want to learn more about Capstone Connect, um, we have local reps throughout the country here in the US. Uh, internationally, we have international reps as well. Um, they can talk to you about Pebble Go or Capstone Interactive eBooks, um, but definitely would love to connect with you. If you do want direct con uh, contact, um, easiest way to get there, um, if you want to be put in contact with your specific rep, is to go to capstone-connect.com. Um, and then, Ida, if people have questions about Buncee, what are the best ways for them to get a hold of support for you guys? Yeah, uh, so first of all, on our, on our Buncee website, we have um, a live chat that's available 9 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. So feel free to drop a message there, or if you have any immediate questions right now or um, after this session, feel free to email me at idac at buncee.com. So I'll go ahead and drop my email in the chat too. Awesome, and then I see there is a question that came in. Um, if you create a Buncee and upload it to Seesaw, do the links work? Um, so this might be a good question for Angie. So I'm not quite sure where, around what what is meant by do the links work. Maybe, Ida, do you want to jump in with this too? Yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in here. So Amy, great question. Uh, so a lot of folks are using Buncee and Seesaw together. Uh, so there's two different ways. One is as a teacher, if you want to create a template using Buncee and then add it as a background on Seesaw, you can do so. Um, but if you would like to keep the, the links interactive, what I would recommend then is to actually take the URL of your Buncee and then paste that into Seesaw. So you could hyperlink um, your items there too. 
Awesome. Well, and if there are um, other questions that come in, um, definitely here to help you out on both sides for sure. Um, we just really want to uh, continue to give you guys creative ways to use these great resources together um, to help you build some um, really amazing learning opportunities for your students. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you to Shannon, Ida, and Angie. Um, it has been a, just a pleasure to get to uh, hear some of the ways and practical ways to actually use these tools together. So thank you guys so much, and I hope you all have a great day.